Hi and welcome to my podcast uh, for the OCR A-Level Computing Specification which is based on parity. Firstly we're going to look at what a parity check is. When we're sending data as binary we count the number of ones um, that are being sent for a parity check. So first of all if we count the number of ones here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So here we've got five ones. We can now use this when data is sent to decide whether this data is valid at the other end, whether we've actually got the correct data if this uh, incorrect data has happened because of some sort of transmission error. So when we've got this, we've got five ones. Now we could have had an even number of ones or we could have had an odd number of ones. So what we can do is use that knowledge, knowing that it can only be either even or odd, to set up what's called a parity check. So we add a parity bit on the end of the byte. So if we have a look down here, what we've got is we're going to use something called even parity. And we've now got one, two, three, four, five. And we added an extra bit and we've changed the number of that bit uh, from a zero to a one here. So it is now even. So when we check at the end, we know this parity bit isn't part of the communication, but we now know that we should definitely have an even number of ones when we send the data. Equally, if we wanted to do odd parity at the other end, we'd make sure that the total number of ones with the parity bit included would be odd. So in this case, we wouldn't add a one here, we'd add a zero. And then we check at the end to make sure that it all added up. So when it arrives at its destination, it is checked to see whether there is an even number of ones. So here, we've got one, two, three, four, five. That means one of the bits of data has incorrectly been sent, this one here if we look, which means that this data is rejected and we have to send it again. Otherwise, what we have in this situation, we've got an accepted piece because we've got the same data as we had before, which is one, two, three, four, five, six with the parity bit, which is even, which means we can accept that data. However, there's one issue with parity bits and that is if more than one bit changes, during transmission, the check would not detect a mistake. So this data is completely different to what we had originally. Um, and now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six again, which is even, which is accepted, but that isn't the same as what we sent originally, which is here, because two bits have changed. So if two bits change, then we've got a problem. However, it's unlikely that's going to happen, but there's still a slim chance that it could happen. So essentially that's what doing using a parity check is. You're adding an extra byte, sorry, an extra bit to your byte. So if we go back to this one, an extra bit to your byte, then when you send the data, you check that all the bits are, um, all the number of ones in the bits add up to an even number. Uh, so they're an even number of ones if we're doing even parity. If there are, the data is accepted. If we don't have an even number of ones, the data is rejected and we'll send it again. So that is a simple, simple explanation of parity. Um, however, in this simple example that we've got, we cannot work out which bit there an error is, so we have to send the data again. So that's not ideal. What we'll look at now is one of the exam questions that's come up in the past for the OCR computing, which is question eight in June 2009. And that one actually asked how you could use parity to check um, where an error was and correct any errors. Now, it is possible to do that, but it's a little bit more complicated. So usually your questions will come up will be quite simple, which is what we've just looked at is what is parity in the description of what I've just described in your in answer will be enough. However, if you do get a similar question to the one that question eight showed, this is how it goes. So we have... In this case, we're sending a block of data, which is two bytes for this example. So we have a block of data. It might be more than two bytes. It might be several. Well, it probably will be several different bytes. But we've got this. We can add parity bits to this again. But this time, we're a bit clever about it. We produce a matrix. And what we do, excuse me, what we do is add, let's do that again, a parity bit for the each byte, so we've got one byte here and one byte here, and they both get parity bits, but we also add a parity bit for each bit place. So here's one bit place, here's two bit place, and so on and so on and so on. So we've got 
eight bit places in this byte and each of them has their own parity bit. So what we're looking at here is all of this if we're using even parity. One, two, three, four, five, and we've added an extra one because we want to have an even number before we send. And we've got one, two, three. Again, we want to have an even number before we send, so we've got a one here. And if we look downwards this time, we want an even number for each bit place. So we've got two there, so we don't need one. We've got one here, so we do need an extra one here. One again, so we need an extra one. Two here, so it's even, we don't need one. One here, we need one, and so on. Don't need one there, we need one here, and we don't need one there. So, the parity is checked for bytes and bit places at the other end. So we check all the parity for the block. If a bit is incorrect, then by checking the bytes, we can see which one needs changing. So, um, say we look at this here. If this bit was incorrect, here, this bit place, all we need to do is then check which byte it related to that was incorrect to decide which bit needed changing. So if we look at this, it shows an example of that in practice. So we've sent our data. We've got the same data at the top, but we've got a mistake in the bottom. When we go through, we check one and one and zero is two, two ones, and that's even, that's fine. We've got a zero and a zero here, and a 1 in the parity bit place, that equals to 1, that's odd, so we know we've got an error in this bit place, but as of yet we don't know which byte that relates to. We then run through the rest and we quickly check, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, and that's okay. So then we know this bit place has an error, we then look at the bytes. So 1, 2, 3, that shows us that's the incorrect byte because we only have three and it should be even. That means this is the wrong bit place and this is the wrong byte. So therefore we know this bit here is the incorrect one and we can change the value of that bit. If you look at the mark scheme now for that question, it might make a bit more sense after I've just been through that. Um, I'm sure if you did answer it in this way with a diagram, the examiner would accept it. Um, that is essentially uh, how you can check and alter errors because afterwards we can know that this is the incorrect bit and we just need to change that one from a zero to a one and that will correct the error in the data. Again, we do have a situation if we have more than one bit um, is incorrectly transmitted then uh, that could cause us problems uh, but that's another situation where it's unlikely to happen uh, but it could still potentially happen. So what we've seen there is what a parity check is. So the simple description, as I've just described earlier, of parity check will get you for the simple marks. If you do get a bigger question that asks how you can correct errors using a parity check, then the description I've just gone through then relating to that exam question should help you. Hope that, uh, hope that helps and uh, keep watching and you'll find out more for other parts of the specification.